The story inside this truck is of a project being funded by the Department of Science and Technology, Government of India and Intel and administered by the Binational Indo-US Science and Technology Forum or IUSSTF. The Aquatic Autonomous Observatory, a product of the Indo-US Collaborative Project titled Design and Development of Aquatic Autonomous Observatory, Nirakara Swamsasita Vedshala, NSVS, for in-situ monitoring, real-time data transmission and web-based visualization is being prepared to be anchored at the Bitur River in Kanpur. Designed, structurally analyzed, calibrated and put together at the Smart Material Structures Laboratory at the Indian Institute of Technology at Kanpur. It sends real-time data every 30 seconds to the IIT Kanpur labs. This aquatic observatory works on its own through its onboard unique energy harvesting and communication systems. Energy is the key element for us. If the power requirement is high, then we need large battery and the system would become expensive. Whatever energy we are harvesting from the ambience, from the sun and also from the flow of the water, we want to power our sensors as well as our communication system with the help of that. To power the sensors, there are solar harvesting systems. Now the total amount of energy that can be generated in this system is around 28 to 32 watts. The solar panels which have been integrated here can generate approximately 18 watts. This is the experimental setup that displays how the observatory derives its power from the vortex created by the water in the river or any aquatic system. The vortex induced vibration system which has been integrated at the base can generate around 5 watts. The third system we have is for the locations where we get a good wind power. And the vertical axis wind turbine, if it is integrated, can give up to 8 watt of energy. The soul of the observatory are these sensors that keep feeding data on more than 70 water quality parameters. We have five important sensors sitting inside the top cabin and these are related to temperature, turbidity, acidity or the pH level, conductivity, and the dissolved oxygen that is there in the water. Indo-US partner Utsol Institute is playing a very important role in developing two types of sensors. The channelized optical sensor or Chanos group of sensors from the Wood Shoal Oceanographic Institute in the United States is exceptional because it needs very little power to function and behaves well in a robust environment. The data fed by sensors needs validation beforehand at the laboratory to assess how accurately they perform on location. Particularly for this project, uh, we are trying to measure a lot of heavy metals, like for example chromium, you know, which is a big problem in this belt because of the tannery industry. Measurement of chromium and copper with the spectrophotometric sensor are currently in progress. We have to actually bring back the samples to the lab and this, you know, in the background, the instrument you see, it's called a mass spectrometer, which is, this is the only installation in India that we have right now, which is uh, funded through the IUSTF project. Yet another crucial part of this aquatic observatory is its communication subsystem. This is the communication subsystem, which is responsible for taking the data that is collected from the sensors and uh, communicating it and transmitting it to the servers where it is stored safely and every 15 minutes, the readings coming in from the sensors can be visualized on the mobile phones. Once the data is obtained in large enough volumes, predictive models can be created on how pollution or various components of water quality will behave over time. 